أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تعمدون إلا وأنتم مسلمون صدق الله العظيم I seek refuge with Allah from Satan the Rejected in the name of Allah who is most gracious, most merciful. Alhamdulillah, once again we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sparing our lives and giving us the health and guidance of coming out and offering our Juma Salah. Alhamdulillah, for today's khutbah, the topic will be bidding farewell to the past year and welcoming <coughs> the new year. Alhamdulillah, the Islamic year ends with the sacred month of Zul Hajj. And it begins, the new year begins with the sacred month of Muharram. And in these months, my dear brothers and sisters, there are, benefit, there are many benefits for us. All praise is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has made the sun a shining glory, and the moon as a light, and measured out for its stages, that you might know the number of years and count of time. All praise is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who made the day and the night alternate in succession. For anyone that wishes to remember or presence his gratitude, I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah alone, having no partner. To him belongs the dominion of the universe, for him was the beginning, and to him will be the end and return. I bear witness that Muhammad, upon whom be peace, is his servant and messenger, who was the best of men to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to surrender to him. May the peace and blessings of Allah Almighty be upon him, his family, his companions, and upon anyone that follows in their footsteps until the day of recompense. O servants of Allah, fear Allah and contemplate these days and nights, for, for they are but phases of time that you pass through to the life of the hereafter until you reach your final destination. Every passing day draws you closer to the hereafter and away from this life. He who, he who takes advantage of the opportunities of these days and nights available by doing what gets him closer to Almighty Allah and he will be successful. Blessed is he who is preoccupied in these days obeying Almighty Allah and avoiding sins. Blessed is he who learns from their lessons and the changes that occurs on their passage. Blessed is he who realizes the effects of Almighty Allah in causing the alternation of life and what they entails of wisdom and secret. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Holy Quran, A'udhu billahi mina shaitanir rajim. Yukallibu Allahu al-layla wal-nahar. Inna fi zalika la ibrata li'ulil abusar. The meaning of which? Allah causes the night and the day to succeed each other. That is, if the day is gone, the night comes. And if the night is gone, the day comes, and so on. Truly, in this is indeed a lesson for those who have insight. Quran chapter 24, ayah 44. My dear brothers and sisters, have you not observed the sun every morning in the east and setting every evening in the west? Have you not contemplated this phenomena, how the days are fluctuating between sunrise and sunset and end when everything vanishes? Have you not noticed the phases of the moon throughout the month. The moon first appears at the beginning of the lunar month as a tiny crescent, and it starts growing like bodies do until it reaches a stage in which it becomes a full moon. Then it starts shrinking and diminishing. Likewise is the human life. So be admonished. So be admonished for you if you have reasoning. Have you not witnessed these years renewing year after year? Once a new year starts, man would perceive the end of the year as being far away. Then the days proceeded rapidly, one after another, until the year ends as quickly as a blink of the eye. Likewise, one may perceive the human life as long, whereas in reality, it passes very quickly and death comes and overtakes the soul by surprise. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran, A'uzu billahi mina shaitanir rajeem. وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْعَاتِ بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ مَا كُنْتَ مِنْ تَهِيدِ And the softer of death will come in truth. This is what you have been avoiding. Man would perhaps hope for a long life and comfort himself with such hopes. But the reality is different when these hopes mean nothing, and what man has based on them will be, will be destroyed. My dear brothers and sisters, in these days, you are bidding farewell to a year that has passed and is kept as a witness of everything you have done. You are also receiving a new year. If only I could know what you have deposited in this last year and how you may receive this new year. For this, one should hold himself accountable for everything he has done and thus inspect his actions. If he finds that he has neglected his duties he shall have to repent to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make amends. But if he finds that he has been a sinner and that he has wronged himself, he must stop sinning and violating the prohibitions immediately before his set term is due, or then it will be too late. If he finds that he has been a well-doer and a righteous person, then he ought to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
his Lord and ask him to keep him firm on the straight path until death. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who bestows his mercy upon him. My dear brothers and sisters, faith is not by wishes or beautification. Repentance, not only by words, without being translated into actions, which should entail quitting the sin, repent for. Faith is the belief in the heart, which should also translate into actions. Repentance is the feeling of regret for what uh, was committed of wrongdoings and sins. It is further to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to correct the deeds as well as to fear him and to, re and to realize that he is watching you whenever you do any deed. Thus, you achieve true iman and penance before it is too late. When you become hopeless and, un 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 and unable to do anything in this regard. Our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam admonishes a man and advise him this important advice. Take advantage of five by doing good deeds and making amends for the bad ones before another five befall you. Take advantage of your youth before you grow old, your health before you become sick or ill, your wealth before you become poor, and your free time before you become busy, and your life before it is time for you to die. O servants of Allah, O young people, or the young people have more power and strength than old people. When a man grows weaker, his strength deteriorates. When a man is healthy, he is active and capable of doing many things. However, when he is sick, he becomes weak and incapable of doing what he used to do when he was healthy. A rich person has the luxury of doing things, traveling, and achieving many of his goals. Yet, when he becomes poor, he becomes busy with trying to provide sustenance for himself, his children, and his family. My dear brothers and sisters, in this life, man has the opportunity to do a lot of good deeds. The doors of repentance and accomplishments are wide open, but only for as long as he is alive. However, when he dies, he is no longer able to make amends and to do more good deeds. A dead person is helpless, or is a helpless person, compared to the one who still has the chance in life. O servants of Allah, take the benefits of this admonishment and do not waste what is left of your life as you have done up until now. Death is inevitable. Every one of us shall taste its bitterness. All of us are departing this life for the hereafter, yet we are not, yet we are going to learn this lesson and make up for what we have lost by making amends and doing good deeds before it is too late. It is a matter of appreciating the moments that we live. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Holy Quran, the meaning of which, surely your Lord is Allah, who created the heavens and the earth in six days and then rose over the throne in a manner that suits his majesty, disposing the affairs of all things. No intercessor can plead with him 
except after his leaf. And that is Allah, your Lord. So worship him alone. Then will you not remember? To him is the return of all of you. The promise of Allah is true. It is he who brings, it is he who begins the creation and then will repeat it. And he may reward with justice those who believe in the oneness of Allah and did deeds of righteousness. But those who disbelieve will have a drink of boiling fluids and painful torment because they used to disbelieve. It is he who make the sun a shining thing and the moon a light and measure out of its stages that you might know the number of years and the reckoning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create this but in truth. He explains the ayat, the proofs, evidence, verses, lessons, signs, revelations, etc. in detail for people who have knowledge. Verily, in the alternation of the night and the day, and in all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in the heavens and the earth, are signs, ayat, proof, evidence, verses, lessons, revelations, etc. for those people who keep their duty to Allah and fear him much. Quran chapter 10, ayat 3 to 6. My dear brothers and sisters, we are in the blessed months of the Islamic years. And time, as we all know, waits on no man. Time is going very fast. Time is going very fast, so let us try and make use of it. Don't waste it. Whenever we become aware of an up upcoming event, we do prepare for it. Preparations are usually essentials for our survival. There are steps we take in order to increase the likelihood that we will be safe and happy, inshallah. Preparations become more urgent as the event come closer and more certain. There are two urgent upcoming events that are much certain. They are bigger than any event we can imagine. They are death and the day of judgment. They are death and the day of judgment. These are absolutely certain events in our current and afterlife. As we know, my dear brothers and sisters, this life is just temporary. We live 30, 40 years. Some of us live 70 and more. But in the end, we have to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we know the saying, Kalu inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Because from Allah we come, and to Him is our return. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in Quran. A'uzu billahi mina shaitanir rajim wa iza waqa'ati al-waqiyah laysa li waqati haqaziba When the event inevitably comes to pass then will no one deny its coming. Again, this is from Quran chapter 56, ayats 1 and 2. My dear brothers and sisters, the calamity for that day is far greater than the effects of the storm or war or whatever calamities that happens on the earth. Consequently, our preparations must be much greater. The preparation do not entail stocking up of food or wealth. 
rather to prepare for death on the day of judgment. We must obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, follow the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and stock up heavily on good deeds. We try to gain the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by obeying him. Death and the day of judgment are certain. We will not be able to rally or to rely on relatives and friends for survival. Each one of us will be judged by our preparations. How well we fear will be dependent upon our actions throughout our life by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The day ever approaching draws near. None besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can disclose it. Do you then wonder at this recital and you laugh and weep not, wasting your lifetime in pastime and amusement? <coughs> Anas radiallahu anhu narrates that a man asked the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when will be the hour? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, What have you prepared for it? The man said, Nothing. Except I love Allah and his apostle. The apostle of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, You will be with those you love. We were never as glad as we were on hearing that statement. I love the apostle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Bakr and Umar, I hope that I will be with them because of my love for them, even though my deeds are not similar to theirs. My dear brothers and sisters, it is necessary to recall what we do when we love someone. It is not enough to just say, I love someone. When we love someone, we try our best to please that one. We love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we must obey him and we try to please him we try our best to gain his love love in our hearts we're not put there to remain stagnant love is not an insert thing love in our hearts is manifest by our actions we love his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we try to love him more than we love ourselves, our parents, our families, or any other human being in the whole world. We know that this is not easy to reach that level of love. However, we do strive for such, for such excellence. We try our best to follow the sunnah of the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we try our best to emulate his lifestyle. We hope, inshallah, to be with him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the end. We pray for good, we pray for this goal for all of us. We pray for ourselves, and we pray for you, and we pray for our brothers and sisters the world over. We appeal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cause such blessed <coughs> occasions to return to the Islamic world with happiness, victory, and success. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise high the banner of Islam and guide Muslims to that which he pleases. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on our sick and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on our dead ones. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on our parents who are alive and who have passed away. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to fulfill his commands and to follow in, our, in the footsteps of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina azabinar subana rabbika rabbil izzati ya ma yasifun 
wassalamun ala al-mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah nahmadahu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfir wa na'udzu bi wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlil fala hadiyallahu wa nashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa nashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasul inna allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuhalladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammadin bi adadi man salla wa sab Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin bi adadi man qada wa qab wa salli ala jami'il anbiya'i wal mursalin wa ala kulli malaikatil muqarrabin wa ala ibadillahi salihin bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin ibadallah Inna Allah ya'amuru bil adli wal isad wa ita'i zil qurba wa yanha'anil fahsha'i wal munkar wal baq ya'izukum la'allakum tazakkarun wa la zikrullahi ta'ala awla wa awla wa a'azu wa ajallu wa atammu wa ahamu wa akbar Akim as-salam